part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdland. You're listening to the Krypton Report. to do this video for a little while and it's a comparison video and what it is is we're going to be looking at uh, three origins of Superman kind of that kind of overlap and reuse each other and if you notice I'm wearing my Superman issue number one t-shirt because that's one of the issues we're going to be talking about. Uh, another issue we're going to be looking at is Action Comics number one and if you know the history they kind of reuse certain panels, plots and everything for the two stories but something we're going to look at that you may not have thought of is the dailies. Now, I had this book a long time ago, and it went missing during a move, and my amazing wife, Jania, got it for me. Because there's something very cool and unique about the dailies, that Superman was the first comic book, Ooh, hey. um, but also, he was in a comic strip that you'd look on the Sunday paper, or in the daily paper, because these are the dudes. Um, there's also a book of the Sundays that are in color. The dailies are in black and white. The other thing that's interesting about the dailies is if you study it, it looks like um, artwork by um, Mr. Schuster. And it's not. It was actually contracted out part of their art program. So it's something to look at. So we're going to look at first the dailies. And what another thing I like... <clears throat> is look at the colorization of the S on his chest here. And when you open the book, yeah, that's right. I also bought this. Um, I have a thing for used books, and I, just, I think it's cooler to have a used copy of something when it comes to a book than a new. And my wife, when she bought this for me, found it from a library that was selling it. So it had a little bit more meaning to it. Now this is Superman the Daily Strips. Numbers 1 through 966, 1939 through 1942. Alright, so it says episode 1, <coughs> Superman, and I'm just going to read it out loud, it's very short. The first strip is four panels, and you can see that here. Here's the first, the top, and the second. Krypton, a distant planet so far advanced in evolution that it bears the civilization of supermen, beings which result, which represent the human race as its ultimate peak of perfect, perfect development. Might need to put on my reading glasses. Hold on, everybody. Wait, they're in the other room. Never mind. Miles after miles streak by as Jor L L. We have not the E L, just the L. Krypton's foremost scientist races along at a terrific speed that would outdistance the fastest express train. A great leap carries jor hundreds of yards into the air to a balcony at the top of his home. He enters, and there's his wife, holding their baby. jor you've come. As quick as I could, Laura, my beloved. Where is he, our newborn son? And that's the end of the first daily strip. So you would have to wait till the next day, the next day's paper, and you would get the next part of the story. Second part picks up with... Jarrell, I'm afraid for our newborn son, Cal. Um, are you happy? An earthquake, he says. We see the science building. The next one is it, their, their home crashes, and Jarrell lifts the debris and frees Lara and Cal L. And then we see them running and jumping. And so, what we're seeing here is on the planet Krypton, the people already have superpowers. So, it's implying that the people of Krypton just naturally have these superpowered abilities. <coughs> Excuse me. I need to drink my water from my Superman cup. It's good. Cucumber water. Tastes like I'm eating grass, but it's good for you. Um, we. Jarrell tells Lara his plan. So now we are one, two, three, four, five, six days in. Seven, eight, nine, ten. On the tenth day, 
we're getting the ship being rocketed from Earth, or to Earth from Krypton. We see him go to the Science Council. Eleventh day is the eleventh day panel is just the ship in space, and on the twelfth day is one that we'll bring up because the twelfth day here bottom is where we get traditional Superman. Okay, so we have the sleeping baby is rescued by the burning spaceship by a passing motorist and turned over to an orphan asylum. That's an interesting thing that the orphanage is called an orphan asylum. Keep that in mind, people. Good heavens, it's a child. Attendants unaware the child's physical stru structure is millions of years advanced of their own are astonished by his feats of strength. When maturity was reached, Clark Kent discovered he could easily leap one-eighth of a mile, hurdle a 20-story building, raise tremendous weights, but run faster than an express train, and that nothing less than a bursting shell could penetrate his skin. Early, Clark decided he must turn his titanic strength into channels that would benefit mankind, and so was created Superman, champion of the oppressed, the physical marvel who had the sworn to devote his existence to helping those in need. All right. So, as I flip through the first dailies here, and we're going to be coming back to this, because now we're into other features. Now, for example, we're in the dailies, him running on the wire, okay? We have that. We have this story that the third degree about the grasshoppers and ants that can lift strength, that can jump. We have him and the gangsters. We have this familiar pose right here in this panel. And then we have this familiar car incident right here. Now, I did this video because it's very interesting to comparing so many different books. And we end, we have him with Lois, and we have Superman. And it says, Man of Steel begins a startling new adventure Monday. Don't miss it. So that's kind of the origin, okay? Because this is, we're in episode one, okay? If you notice, when we first started, the way the dailies were done, Episode one, Superman comes to Earth. And then, so the whole first episode was this. Episode two was War on Crime. So I'm going to put this over here. Okay? And that's the daily. Now hold on. We'll go get Action Comics. Action Comics number one, sweatshirt. Bring in the representation. We're going to look at Action Comics number one. I got this handy. Uh, I have a really awesome Action Comics number one reprint. Of course, I own it digitally, um, but this was handy and quick to, to get to. So, I'm not going to go through the whole Action Comics. We reviewed that a long time ago. But notice the first page. The first page right here. I'm going to close up to the camera. The first page is the same panel that we saw of him chasing the train. Um, using the same dialogue uh, with a little tweaking. He can leap one-eighth of a mile, hurdle a 20-story building, raise tremendous weights, run faster than an express train, and that nothing less than a bursting shell can penetrate his skin. Early Clark decides he must turn his titanic strength into channels that would benefit mankind, and so has created Superman, champion of the oppressed, physical marvel, who has sworn to devote his ex extensive to... Uh, existence to helping those in need. Can't read. Can't read. So look at that. Same art, slightly different, colored here. We also have the same piece here that explains the theory of the ant and the strength. I find that very fascinating. The orphanage here. When the attendants unaware of the child's physical structure was millions of years advanced of their own, were astounded by his feats of strength. Now I go back over here, and it's not the exact same. Like I said, you know, you have basically like a ghost artist. So we get into the story, okay? 
And notice how it starts, Action Comics 1 starts, as a distant planet was destroyed by old age, a scientist placed his infant son within a hastily de devised spaceship, launching it towards Earth. Now, Action Comics, we know, came out in June 1938, is when the date was, but it was actually printed in April. The Daily here says copyright 1939. As we discussed, that the dailies are 39 through 42, so that's a year later. And then we'll get to Superman issue one. Now, we'll get into the story, and we see some altered familiar panels with the car, which is most famous because of the sweatshirt I'm wearing. Okay? We see him with a, a thug, very similar to the page, but not the same. And then that, then we have the Zatara story, okay? And that's Action Comics number one. And then we're into Action Comics number two. And it's a completely different story. And what I'm, why I say this is we have more interaction with Lois in Action Comics two. And then um, we have more. But the biggest thing I want to say is there is no Krypton reference like we got with Superman and the dailies. Now, I'll be right back with Superman number one. Oh, and I'm back with the Superman one t-shirt. That's right. Um, it's time to look at Superman issue one. And I know there's a little bit of glare. I do apologize. Um, I do have this one digitally. I would love to have a physical reprint copy. It's just nice to have those. I love how DC for a while was doing the $1 back issues of like reprints. Those were great books I was able to buy with my kids because, you know, some of, they're young and they'll tear stuff up. And But they were getting great stories with characters that they love. And a lot better than paying 4 and $5 for back issues of stuff that they're going to love, but they're going to tear up because they're kids and they keep them in their pocket and carry them around. Um, but yeah, Superman is number one. Um, so Superman number one, okay, I believe it came out, I was looking for, but it's not here on my tablet, so just give me a second, I believe it came out in, um, hold on, I have it, I own it Kindly, Kindly, eh, 1939, um, released June 7th, 1939. It's on the DC Infinite app, and what's awesome is that's been released to our friends over in Australia and in the UK, and that's awesome because now we can all read comics together. Another drink of my cucumber flavored salad water. So let's just look at this, okay? Just before the doomed planet Krypton exploded to fragments, a scientist placed his infant son with an experimental rocket ship launching it towards Earth. When the vessel reached our planet, the child was found by an elderly couple, the Kents. Look, Mary. Okay. The poor thing, it's been abandoned. The infant was turned over to an orphan asylum where it astounded the attendants with its feats of strength. Now, we have the same looking panel, but this time it's altered because we have... It's hard to see. Stupid glare. Let's, let's close these windows. Let's see if that helps. Anything? It's just one doctor and the child. He's still holding. This is a dresser. In the dailies, it's a chair. And in action, what it was, like, dear listeners, it was a chair. It was all slightly variations of the same art. Now, we couldn't get that sweet child out of our mind. We've come to adopt him, if you'll permit us. I believe I can be arranged. Thank goodness, they're taking him away before he wrecks the asylum. The love and guidance of his kindly foster parents was to become an important factor in the shaping of the boy's future. Now listen to me, Clark. This great strength of yours, you've got to hide it from people or they'll be scared of you. But when the proper time comes, you might use it to assist humanity. So here we have a reason why he is named Clark. The other, we, he just became Clark. We weren't in action. We didn't know how he got his name, um, which is an interesting 
I'll, I mean, I'll admit, like, it's an interesting way of approaching the story. The next page, it says, as the lad grew, he learned to his delight that he could hurdle skyscrapers, leap an eighth of a mile, raise tremendous weights, run faster than a streamlined train, and nothing less than a bursting shell could penetrate his skin. He's at the doctor's office. I'm not trying to give him a, a needle. And then this is new. This is added because this is the first origin here that we're getting the backstory. So let's look at this. Action came out. The dailies gave us Krypton. Superman gave us the Kents. The passing away of his foster parents greatly grieved Clark Kent, but he but it strengthened the determination that had been growing in his mind. Clark decided he must turn his titanic strength into channels that would benefit mankind, and so was created Superman, champion of the press. The physical Marvel had sworn to devote his existence to helping those in need. And then right here we can look. We're seeing similar panels to what we looked at before. Now the next one jumps ahead, very similar to action, uh, with a lot of the same beats with Clark and Perry. Um, but it falls a different path. You know, in action we have Lois, and we have the thugs. And Superman is was actually a really great way for the book to reboot itself because it is a 64-page book. Um, so, give me just a second here. My camera is being a pain, but well, what else is new? My iPad has officially, uh, won't let me use the app anymore for a lot of things, so it's become very problematic. So I'm going to pull it up real quick here. Hold on. On my uh, DC Infinite, since my iPad's being butt. But as we look in Superman number one here, and on my laptop, you'll see what? I know there's a glare and you're seeing like it, the famous car. Right here in, in we are seeing the car scene again. So oh, what I find most interesting is with Superman number one, there's the car over the head, is the fact that we get so much more of Superman's story and we get it gets pulled from the early action comics and I won't dive into everything, because um, that's not what we're really here to dissect. But the idea is, it, it gave them a chance to tell more Superman's history, but we didn't get any more of Krypton. So, that was my video presentation I wanted to do for Action Day, but I was sick. I've been having um, some health issues. I had some surgery done in my mouth that didn't go as quickly as hopeful, as planned, but that's another story. So here it is. Sorry it's late, and remember. Look up in the sky. We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find all of our information right there. And if you want to keep Krypton from exploding, join our $1 a month Patreon. That's right, for $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, Caped Wonder, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope Podcast.